Welcome home. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and com. We are uh, getting back out on the streets beginning February 5th with the Maryland Crab Cake. Do I have a handful of the gingerbread scented O snaps? I gave away, like, I, I think this is all I have left of my holiday uh, uh, Maryland lottery giveaways. I was up at Hollywood Casino for the Joe Flacco experiment and the Peacock aversion uh on saturday night we'll be hopefully back there for a super bowl uh march we're going to be doing the maryland crab cake tour five consecutive days live unprecedented uh charitably uh beginning on february the 5th i'll have more details for that uh this guy will probably be out in las vegas if i know him but he'll be in baltimore this week uh he's a longtime sports executive and that makes him sound like a big shot so don't get all overwhelmed with him i mean he's just one of us pikesville guy uh now down in miami sunning himself uh, after uh, a long time out in los angeles california running things for fox sports as well as yahoo and other places he is uh cats man do and is sort of a lifer afflicted Oriole and Raven fan uh, and coming home this weekend. What's up, David Katz? How are you, man? Uh, good to have you back on the program. I guess if I'm having you on in January, it's either, oh, ish, it's broken, we have to fix it, or, hey, I'm coming in for a playoff game. I hear it's going to be cold. That's what they tell me. It's going to be really cold. And this will be the first time I come back to Baltimore where my parents are not there. They sold my my home, my childhood home of 50 years. And uh, I'm staying in hotels and crashing at friends' places. It's a very unusual feeling for me to not have a, a home base there. But I will not be missing what I hope is the next two weekends of Ravens football be coming up uh, for this weekend and hopefully, God willing, the following. I gotta think if I've ever really spent a night in a hotel room in Baltimore. I have one night I remember on Pier Five. I mean, I lived in a hotel for 19 years, right? So, like, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so I, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say, but I'm trying to think like, I'm just trying to think even when I was single, something happened and I wound up somewhere. I can't even, I don't know that I've ever been in a hotel room at the Hyatt or at the, sh well, I've been in a couple with, with Marvin on nights before he thought he was getting fired where we drank wine and ate pizza. Um, mm. And that's usually like the, the Hilton or whatever, but I don't, I've never spent a night in any of these hotels. I don't think so. How are, is this a first for you? A, a, a hotel night in Baltimore? It's a very strange feeling. I came up for a game in October. I stayed at the Pendry cause I wanted the full Baltimore experience. Atta boy. Um, and it was awesome. It was actually great to kind of be downtown. I'm a County kid. So to be downtown, to spend the weekend there was, was great and kind of reinvigorates you as to uh, all the, the warm feelings you have for being a Baltimore native. So guys, yeah, like you asked me what it's like to like live in Towson now. Like I moved to like some awful place like <laughs> Falston or like Sparks, you know, like not in the city anymore, you know, like, I, I don't know. I, I live downtown and I, I loved it. And, and there are days I miss it. I was in Manhattan all day on Thursday, seeing Billy Joel. I went up for the day wow. and I get my jam, you know, of like, walking the streets and doing all that. And I don't know. I, I find myself in Baltimore. I'm craving a meat cheese, like literally right this minute because I haven't had it in a couple of weeks and I'm getting, ooh, 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 I gotta need some meatballs. But yeah, I mean, there is a point where like when you, if you didn't really live in the city you, and you've, and you've left the city that you don't think about it so much, but like then your parents sell their place and you're like, Hey, I ain't got a place to sleep. What am I going to do? He sold it one year too early. This is the year you need to hold on to it between the Orioles and what's happening here, this would have been a good time to have a home base. Hey, man, the, the dude that bought my condo with this view was is a huge Oriole fan. The guy that lives in my old unit that I uh -huh. lived in for 19 years. That actually Harold Reynolds lived in when he was an Oriole, strangely enough. Wow. So, true story. All right, so let's get to this Raven thing, dude. Um, and we'll evaluate the rest of all of this. Your um, give everybody a little bit of your background because I want to like I can kiss your ass and say he's executive sports and digital and all that, but tell everybody where you are in life and basically what this means to you because you're flying back up for this, dude. You're probably on the field in New Orleans, probably, and I don't know about Tampa where you were in your life. I was. I've been thrown out. I'm doing a completely different thing for for the Maryland food. We're gonna do something mm -hmm. special, something that we're going to grow with. But like, do you expect to be in Vegas? You got fly. I mean, give, give me your couple weeks here. Sure. Um, well, the Tampa game was my first ever Super Bowl that I, that I had ever attended. I think at this point I've got something like 20 of the last 22 or some, some kind of crazy number. And thankfully, you know, the, the league has, 
has credentialed me and my organization for many of those years. And I've been in the locker rooms and I've been on the sidelines. I did spend uh, three years running the digital business for Fox Sports. And we had a Super Bowl in Miami and pre-COVID, the one the one month before COVID. That was the last period. sort of normal one. It. Luke that and I went down. One. We had Cuban food. We saw yeah. you. You had a little Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Hugh Shindig. And like, yeah, I, I mean. Hosted, yeah, I hosted the reunion. With right, Ray, you. Ed, That's what Reggie I said. Wayne yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, and we had Coach Jimmy. You know Dunn. who I hosted that weekend that was a pleasure for me? Vincenzo Testaverde. Oh, there you go. He was the, the last great guest in Miami. I mean, I, that was a great Super Bowl, dude. I had Chris Carter. Yeah. I, I, we, I had really meaningful conversations with a lot of people. And you were a part. You were running it. You are a part of it, right? Well, yeah, it was it was very cool to be there as a part of Fox Sports. And we had the setup on the beach, but also to have the access on the field. And when you are the, the broadcast network of the Super Bowl, you get unparalleled access. You know, I... I had hired Drew Brees, Joe Montana, and Brett Favre to sit in a room and do the first ever watch party. They call them watch parties now. Peyton Manning or Manning casts. Uh, fun story. I actually offered the opportunity for Peyton, Eli, and the Manning family to do the first ever NFL watch party. And uh, I won't get into all the details, but we offered them a large sum of money. And everyone in the family wanted to do it except for one person, wasn't sure, then decided not to do it. They saw what we did with Favre, Breeze, and Montana. It was a lot of fun. And I walked uh, I walked Drew Breeze out onto the field before the game, which was a very interesting experience because that's where he had played and won his only Super Bowl. And this was at a time where he had finished what they thought was his last year in New Orleans. And was he going to come back for one more year? So we, we had him do our event and we walked him down. And I was just standing behind Drew as he kind of walked out, on the state, out on, onto the field Actually, didn't have field access, so he had to talk his way out there. They wouldn't let show his ring. The field. Um, I had to say to the guard, "This gentleman won a Super Bowl here, and he's with us at Fox Sports. Could you let him on?" And they said only if he stands here in the corner. They wouldn't let him really walk the field. But I'm standing behind Drew. I have video of this of him just kind of walking out with the buzz before the Super Bowl event, and he's soaking it all in. And I knew in that moment, if I could have bet this, I would have. Drew Brees was going to come back for one more year. He, it was not out of his system. And he ended up coming back for one more year. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been blessed to be in and around these games. Um, I was in the locker room the last time the Ravens won, as, as I know you were. And there was just something special. That, to me, was the most special event I've ever had because even though I had the credential – I bought the tickets so I could sit with my dad and watch the game. It was his first ever playoff game, despite being a, a lifetime Baltimorean. And then I sent him home so I could go into the locker room for the post-game interviews and festivities. And I have pictures in there uh, and memories that um, that I'll never forget. So, yes, I will be in Vegas. I bought that ticket a while ago, but I was planning on going whether or not the Ravens made it before they went on what was a very strong end of the season. Well, they haven't made it yet. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I, no, I, I, I am, I have PTSD, like a lot of Baltimore sports fans over 2019 and over what this whole thing represents this year. I, I think we are all entirely uncomfortable with the idea of being the hunted as opposed to being the hunter. We are much better as the underdog, as the hunter, where we're playing with a chip on our shoulder because we're disrespected. And now as the number one seed, you are the target and you are the hunted. And uh, we will see if this team is different from the Ravens teams of past, which did not handle that pressure particularly well for a lot of different reasons. So I don't count any chickens here before they hatch. We, uh, I'm going to Vegas and I'm hoping I'm uh, a lot of my Baltimore friends are joining me, but we won't know that for, for another, you know, couple of weeks. David Katz is my guest, a longtime sports executive. He's down in Miami via Baltimore and Pikesville, a little bit of a Baltimore accent. I'll still, you know, it's kind of still there a little bit. Um, at least when you come Only on with me, it's I there. It. It's fine. Turn it on, turn it off. It's all good. It's a, it's a good week to turn it on here, I guess, as you make your way up here. I would say this. If I were writing Purple Rain 3, and I'm not, but if I were, um, this is a fascinating team in that they were never behind. They never had to play from behind. They may not have to. They can win three more games and not have to play from behind. Um, 
the the notion that Lamar's changed into a pocket passer can be that now that we found out that Josh Allen can fake sliding and get back up and run 50 yards. Hell, Lamar's got to try that every week, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, and if you're a defender, knock his head off, take the 15 yards. That's how I coach it. Just just blow him up, blow him up, blow up, take the 15 yards, take the fine, what it, it, blow him up because you can't. You can't have that. I thought about how crazy that would be. I don't know how these weeks are going to play out, but I'll say this to you and you and I, you and I get together every three months or so. I think we were together right in the baseball run in October yep. and we sort of, you know, check in. I put the thermometer in, see where you are and, you know, where your sports executive mind and your sports fan, you know, all that stuff that where you would be. And all along, I think we believe this would be really hard to do. I remember talking to Dave Shinen uh, over the summer about whether the Orioles or the Ravens would be the first ones to have a parade. He said neither because it's that hard to do. I can't really bet on one or the other in any era, no matter how good they are, because ask the Cowboys, ask the Eagles how oh, that yeah. went last year, and now they're going to fire their coach. And it's all over 48 weeks after. I mean, <laughs> Billick was 13-3, and three, then he was unemployed, right? You know, mm-hmm. Harbaugh's made it a long time. Tomlin walked off the dace. You know, it pissed off because they're asking about his contract. So I, I would just say for me, Purple Rain 3 in in doing this and writing this would have, in my mind, thought like the Joe Flacco route. Beat the Andrew Luck, go on the road, beat the uh, Patrick Mahomes, beat the Josh Allen, and then beat the Jalen Hurts or the whomever it is in the Super Bowl this is like a different kind of story this year with the bye, with the Bengals being out of the way, with the Jaguars falling apart, with and teams always sort of fall apart this time of year for injury. You're down in Miami. I mean, I don't think the Dolphins stunk or couldn't win. They got just so banged up they couldn't win. And yeah. we've been a part of that the last two years, right, where we didn't have a quarterback. But this notion that they're going to play this rookie quarterback and a rookie coach at home as 10 point favorites on a really cold day against the dome team. And I have my own questions about Lamar in cold weather. I, I really do. I don't think it's a benefit at all that it's 20 oh, degrees. It's this, the Ravens. That being said, it might be worse next week. If they win, who knows? Right. I know one thing next week, if they survive this week, they're going to get Allen or they're going to get Mahomes. They're going to, and, and I don't know that Buffalo has no heart of a champion. They, have a heart of an almost champion. Same thing as Cincinnati. Same thing as Philadelphia. I mean, until you win, you don't win. And Mahomes is the guy. Yeah. I'm expecting Mahomes to go give them hell in Buffalo this week. But the, the pathway to doing this might be Brock Purdy. And I mean, by the time Flacco got to Kaepernick, it was like you beat Brady and, and Manning. It's a quarterback league. Lamar is the hunted. Lamar's the best of all of them, perceived as such. MVPs, different, harder to defend. All of that's being said. Not perceived as better than Mahomes, I don't think, because Mahomes has pelts. But doing it this way, where they're going to do it at home, they have a team that might have been out of the playoffs a week and a half ago, had things worked a different way. And, you know, I, I respect Houston, but I don't want to say this is easy, but this is the, the path of least resistance that they have found themselves on from playing great football and staying mainly healthy in November, December. Look, I think the whole rest versus rust situation, it scares me that this team, which had so much momentum that was clicking on all cylinders, wasn't going to play their starters for 19 days or whatever the number is. That seems like a very long time. And between what happened in 2019 and what happened with the Orioles when they had the layoff and the bye, if you will, um, I think we're all a little concerned about that as as Baltimore fans. And the way it's going to play out, to me, you know, you mentioned the team has not been down all season. What happens if there's two quick scores for the Texans or next week, let's say it's Kansas City and Buffalo. We're down 17 to three at the start of the second quarter. We're down 14, nothing or 10, nothing. And we haven't been in that situation. Is this a team with the maturity to not panic and to just chip away and, and play good football, smart football, and smart coaching? Or is that does the panic under the pressure set in where Harb starts going for it on maybe questionable fourth downs in a way that he hasn't this year, analytics be damned, but he hasn't been quite as aggressive this year, partly because the math is he doesn't need to. He's got the better team and the better personnel, but – what happens? Because we've seen some pressing from coaching 
and from players in the past. And is this, you know, the new Lamar where he's not going to press, he's not going to try to I think if you enter the fourth quarter down seven points, it gets a little, people get a little crazy here because you're one mistake away from your season being over. You know what I mean? Like, and they haven't been one mistake away from their season being over. Really since 2009. I mean, last year, yeah, and I'll give you all that, but they were playing on borrowed money the whole time. They had a chance to beat Cincinnati last year. So that's good experience for all the guys who played in that game last year and remember the disappointment of walking off a playoff field a loser. So I I tend to forget that because I never really gave them any chance to win the Super Bowl last year, but right. they did play in the playoff, right? So so we, 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 we want to give them the experience of doing that, and we think, well, Lamar's only won one playoff game, and I do think, to your point, of Harbaugh sending Billy Cundiff out there to shank a kick with a timeout in his pocket. Like, <laughs> that, that's kind of crazy they're going to put him in the Hall of Fame after that, right? Not alone, Let alone his brother cheating and about to get another $100 million to go run the Chargers or whatever outfit that they want to run with. But, but the red flags, the challenges, uh, the managing of the timeouts, um, Crowd noise here, what that represents defensively, what that represents on a cold day where people don't clap. And it it won't be as loud in that stadium. It just can't be because it's too cold to be that loud. I, I, I know this from from real history. That's why that dome in Detroit was crazy It's because mm-hmm. it was five degrees outside and it was 74 inside. So um, I, I know these games play differently and they are played differently. Um, the Texans are the hot team right now, right? Any, and you knew that when you take a week off at the rust versus rest, you're going to get the hot team. You're going to get a team that won and maybe won an impressive style last week as they did. I don't know. There's any reason to love the Houston Texans in 20 degrees with a rookie, rookie quarterback and a rookie coach. All the more reason is you better not lose to them. Right. That's exactly right. And I think when you hit them in the fit and hit them in the mouth early, and you're going to have to get to the quarterback, then you're going to see how they react. But I think this isn't about, I'm not worried about any players. I'm not worried about our coaches. I think we are plus plus in terms of advantage across the board. We have the experience. We have a team of coaches that know these players and have put them in positions to succeed. This is the Lamar show. Lamar has to be on his game. And if he's not on his game, he can't force the game he wants to play. He's going to have to move to the other game whether that's running, whether that's doing, you know, what he's done in the past, shorter passes, not long passes, whatever it happens to be. But the team has so many weapons and there's a a lot of variety. And I think the coaching staff is going to be better prepared this time. And obviously without Greg Roman, who basically telegraphed the playbook and the the Titans knew exactly what we were going to run, having played us previously, Um, the variety that Munkin brings to the table I watch these games, Ness, like you do, and it used to be I knew what the team was going to do before they did it. You watch enough Ravens football, you know the tendencies, whether it's run, run, pass, punt, you know you know the play. This year on any given down, I can't tell you whether we're going to run or pass. I can't tell you whether it's going to be a, a screen or a sweep or um, a, a longer pass down the sideline. There is so much creativity an uncertainty that you put on the part of the defense that um, I think we can call a really good, we have a lot of tools here, arrows in our quiver, and we're a very different team that candidly won, but didn't play great in week one against the Texans team where CJ Shroud was a true rookie. Whereas I don't think he's really a rookie now. So it's going to be a very different game. Lamar's stats were pedestrian in that game, even though he was very efficient as a quarterback, 169 passing yards. He threw a pick. He didn't throw a touchdown. Um, he got sacked four times, so he didn't have a stellar game and Lamar is now playing at a stellar level. So I think everything is, is leaning us, um, in a very significant way, but I just want us to kind of get out and impose our will early and not have the pressure of a tight game where again, as you said, one mistake can end your season. David Katz is here. He is in Miami. He'll be back in Baltimore. Uh, he is of Pikesville and longtime sports executive uh, at Fox Sports as well as Yahoo back in the day. And um, you doing anything you want to plug other than just getting married, being in love and kind of hanging out down South Beach? I mean, dude, it's cold up here. Bring your parka, bro. I mean, like, seriously, like this is going to be a different kind of visit for you. My blood has thinned greatly. And this this will probably be the coldest game I've attended since. The uh, the game that I saw you, the miracle at Mile High, that was the last. That's right. We have a picture together at that game. 
Yeah. We will show the greatest sports moment I've ever. It was pretty good, dude. In yeah. person. Tell uh, that story a little bit because, like, you were going to leave because you were living in LA. First off, it was just really, really cold. Like I can't, I was in the press box and I had heaters. My wife brought the little heaters you break mm -hmm. open. We had mm -hmm. them in our shoes and our hands. You could see your breath in the press box. You know, DaCosta's behind me with three layers. Ozzy's got his scarf on. Like we were freezing in the press box. My fingers were icy in the press box. But seeing that ball go up in the air from the angle we were at, and the press box was cleared out. Everybody had left the press mm -hmm. box because the game was over. Everybody was going to the elevator. The only ones left were Ozzy, Eric, me, and my wife. Everybody else left. And that ball went up in the air from my right to my left. I watched it go up. I watched Jacoby get under the ball. And I'm like, I grabbed Jen. I'm like, we got a shot. Like, And I grabbed her as hard as I've ever grabbed. Well, I grabbed Kevin Eck pretty hard at the Ray Lewis game in Tennessee in 01. As I remember, Kevin and I went at it pretty good that in the upper deck that day. But I grabbed her. The ball went up. And, like, you almost missed it or, like, you had a flight or you got stuck in Denver where it was God. You had a thing that yeah. day where it almost didn't happen for you, right? Great, great memory. So I brought my girlfriend at the time up from L.A. She had never been to an NFL game. We went met you pregame. Was she from L.A.? Had she ever been cold? I, I, you know what? She was not from LA, but this was definitely one of the colder days she's ever had. And if you remember in that game, every quarter ended tied. We went up, they tied it back. So it was this extraordinary drama, the way it was playing out up until the very end. So I had, I had league contacts, let's call it that at the time. So when they came out with the, the time, I think it was like a two o'clock kick or something. I called my contact at the league and I said, can I make like a 730 flight out of uh, Denver International? No, I would. No, and, no. And, the and, airport's in Wyoming. And they said, they said, oh, for sure, you're going to be able to make Ugh. it. You won't run past five, whatever. You'll make the eight o'clock flight, 730 flight. No problem. So I booked it. Fly up, fly back. And this game, I don't know if you also remember, it was taking forever for them to spot the ball and reviews. And it was just like the most laborious game ever administratively before all the craziness. So we get to- It did feel like a five hour game. I it mean- was a, It was. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was maybe longer than that. And when you get to the end, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, they, Peyton had the ball. We had like one timeout left. All he needed to do was convert one more first down and the game's over. So I looked at my girlfriend and I said, if we don't leave now, we will not make our flight. Then I'll have to rebook our flights, get a hotel room, all to watch two and a half more minutes of Peyton taking a knee and us losing a game. I'll be pissed off. Ray Lewis's last game. I'll lose my mind to have to go spend another thousand dollars on top of that. So I said, should we go? Let's go. This so makes all the sense in the world because I'm thinking about it at that moment. Because at that moment, there were five times in that game you were convinced we we're going to lose. And at least lose. two, you were convinced we lost. Not, not going to lose. You were convinced we were going to lose. We hadn't lost yet, right? right. But, yeah, I mean, I'm just. Right. This game is over. And then we walk down the stairs. We're outside. We don't have the luxury of being in a press box. We've been sitting outside since we got in at 8 a.m. that morning having drinks with you at the tailgate. And then we've been so outside cold. the whole time. So we get down to the bottom. And I look at my watch. And I'm thinking to myself, I run out of this stadium and how am I going to get a cab? This is like pre Uber. How am I going to get a cab? Am I going to make it? And then the real thing that hit me having lived in LA for 20 years was I hear these stories of my friends who left the Kirk Gibson game early because there was no way the Dodgers were going to win. And they heard the home run from the parking lot. And I turned to her. I left I the Lenny Dykstra home run game at Shea stadium early. Just so you know, I did. It happens. I left. I yeah. turned to her and I said, if this is my Kirk Gibson moment and I work in sports and I miss it, I will never forgive myself. Screw it. I'm getting the hotel. We're spending the night. We're going back up to our seats. Gangnam Style was the number one song in the world at that time. The stadium was playing at the timeout Gangnam Style. That stadium was shaking. And I come back and all the, the Broncos fans are hazing me. Oh, you're coming back for more. What a loser. You're... And they're just ta taunting me. And we settle back into our seats 
and I just stand there and I witness the greatest sports moment I've ever seen when Peyton, they decide really not to throw the ball, not to go for the first down. They get conservative. Peyton, I'll never forget. You know what I'm going to do for you? You know what I'm going to do for you as a gift to you here at Baltimore Positive? I'm going to get Brandon Stokely on a Monday. We'll talk to him about it. What do you think about it? Because I'll I'll do it under the guise that it's all Super Bowl thirty five and the oh, catch yeah. and all that. But I'm gonna hit Brandon with that because Brandon doesn't like to talk about that. Amazing, <laughs> I'm for sure. And there it was. And then, by the way, we went to two more overtimes. Let's not forget that was the end of regulation. And then it was an overtime where no one scored, and then another overtime before we, our rookie kicker Justin Tucker, put us through. But what a game, what an experience, um, and just one for the ages. He is David Katz. He's Katz Man Do out on the interwebs and uh, still loving sports and loving what we do. So let's get executive minded here because you were the one, Todd Munkin left, Greg Roman, right, all of that. Um, crazy time in the sport right now, right? With Belichick and the Cowboys and big jobs and who knows what happens to the Eagles after what they did. And, um, you know, Tomlin walks off and maybe that's his way of saying, I'm either going to get a new gig here or I'm going to go get my, another gig because like, he's not going to play with a one year deal and live under the, am I going to the playoffs for the 18th year in a row or whatever the number is. Right. So all of these seats start to shake a little bit. I mean, if Andy Reid wins another one or doesn't, maybe there's movement there, right? So you have all of these P. Carroll, Seattle, Mike Vrabel's not got a job. Uh, everybody thought that my dude, Dan Quinn, was going to get a job. Some of the guys that almost won a Super Bowl, damn, right? Um, and he, I like him. He's a Salisbury guy. Yeah. You know, He's got some local ties. And then they go out and put the turd of a lifetime up with the Cowboys. So it's hard to hate the Cowboys. I like Bones Fossil so much, and I, I like Dan Quinn so much. Just you can't like the Cowboys. So you got to feel just like the Eagles. You can't like – I like Jason Kelsey. I'm like, I'm fine, but I ain't a roof for him again. Um, right. It was hard enough that I rooted for the Browns last week. I, feel I, I still need a bath from all of that <laughs> now that it's over with. But coaching and – the notion that there's um, royalty in the Harbaugh bloodlines, right, at this point, if Har- especially if Harbaugh wins three games here, he and his brother share, and his brother comes back, and they're going to play in the championship game next year, uh, you know, in, in the AFC, mm-hmm. because that's he's probably going to take an AFC job. Maybe he won't. I don't know. I don't I don't know what jo- J- Jim Harbaugh probably be back in Michigan cheating more. I, I don't even know. But the coaching thing and how Brian Billick would always say to me, he, he said this to me so many times. I can give you the line. I'm not going to let them bring a truck up behind my building and take my coaches out of here. That's how he would always say it. They're not going to bring a U-Haul here to haul Marvin and Rex and Mike Smith and Jack Del Rio. They all became head coaches. Every one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, every one of them. And I do, by the way, Jed Fish just got a big job in Washington, right? And he was another guy in the tree, right? I'm, I'm Facebook friends with Jed Fish. Anthony Jed, Weaver's Jed, getting Jed's looks. a dear friend of mine. We, we spent a lot of time in L.A. together when he was with UCLA and then the Rams. Uh, Jed has done a phenomenal job. Yeah, and but the tree, right? Harbaugh now has gold and the Harbaugh family and McDonald's going to have a pick of three jobs, right? When this is all over with and they're all going to hold up waiting. We're all going to figure out next week who they really want. The Falcons haven't hired anybody or whatever, Tennessee. There is a real chance that, and I don't know what John's terms are with these guys. They're, they're, we might lose five or six coaches. I mean, and not let alone they're going to wind up losing players, right? They're going to have to tag yes. Matt Abike. I don't want to get too far ahead, and I'll call you a month after the parade when you're still getting the champagne out of your hair and your two tickets to Paradise Hangover and your cigar uh, out in Vegas. We'll talk about it, but it is a little now or never, and it's always now or never when yep. you're in this position, though, right? Yeah. I mean, look, it was now or never the year I thought Ray was going to retire, Lee Evans drops the ball, kind of misses the field goal. And I was, I've never been more heartbroken around a sporting event that I had nothing to do with other than be a fan than that moment, because not just of the loss and what it meant, it was what it meant for the players we grew up watching, those iconic players. I thought that was it for Ray and Ed and those guys. Uh, And then they were able to come back the next year on a team that wasn't as good as the team the year before and win it all. So it's a very mercurial sport and the way things play out, there, there is Despite what they say in the uh, the media and the ads, there is no script for this. Um, but yes, it feels there feels like a sense of urgency because you make it through and everyone's 
knock on wood, seemingly healthy for the most part outside of, you know, JK. And, um, and it just feels like this team is poised to do it. So these are those moments. And you have a quote unquote down year from a homes where his receivers can't catch the ball. And Kelsey's distracted by Taylor Swift. And it just seems like, and the bills don't look as dominant as people think they are because they've won a bunch of games here at the end. Uh, and they certainly have been tested and and made it through, but they haven't played a great Dolphins team and things like that. So uh, there's no phenomenal team out there that I look at that I'd say, man, the Ravens are not as good as. The Ravens are, on paper, the best team in the NFL, and we need to execute, and it should be our year. And if it isn't, man, that's where it feels even even worse because you know how rare these moments are. So let's try to enjoy the next, what I hope is the next few weeks, where the world starts, you know, again, talking about us and our team and our city and all the moves we've made uh, and how smart we are as an organization. And let's try to uh, to try to make it make it work. And then my question for you is, if the Ravens are somehow able to put this together and win one, what does that mean for us? Does our ownership, you know, does Steve Bashadi, who I think is truly the best owner in the NFL, or one of the best owners in all professional. Let's get that sports. on your show one day, but go ahead. Um, what what does he do? Does he sell the team? Is he done? Does he tap out? Uh, or does he say, man, I, I I need more of this? By the way, that's um I think he taps out, but I and I I think there's a a big price to tap out and people waiting in line. I happen to know people are waiting in line uh to 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 take it. Um yeah, I I, I would think that if he won again, it you know, I mean, even John, at some point, he ain't going to yeah. want to do this. I don't think he's that close to I, it looks like John's still having fun with this. Um, but I don't know, because I've been thrown out, which really should speak to it could have been you. So just think about that. So uh, David Katz is here. He's Katz man. Do you can find him out uh, doing all good things on the interwebs, all good things in his real life down in Miami. I'm happy you took all this time off this sports executive stuff and found some happiness. And dude, you can bring me some stone crabs here. This way. I mean, what, what happens here this time of year? I don't even need to pack them in ice. I just have to get them to Baltimore and they'll stay chilled. So it works out perfectly. You got to bring that little mustard for me though. Oh yeah. Plenty of that. For you with, um, I, I guess the big picture in, in this is seeing the other side and seeing the NFC side. <laughs> I feel like this is a little treacherous, right? Like navigating Houston is a 10 point favor on a cold day. You know, they should win if they, they better. I, I keep saying they better win. They better win. They better win. Next week, navigating Mahomes, Allen, whoever wins will be the hot team, right? Whoever right. wins will look right. awesome because this is a slugfest on Sunday night if we're sitting around waiting for it. But then there's the Super Bowl side of it. Man, what happened in Philadelphia? What happened? To, uh, what they did to San Francisco, what they did to Detroit during the course of the year. You mentioned not being behind. They were high, behind for a minute or two with the Rams. You know, they, they did have to play a little catch up with the Rams. But they have steamrolled teams. I cannot fathom them getting to a Super Bowl and losing. Like, if they were to navigate this side, it would feel like two weeks of let's – fire up the band for the parade. And I know it's not that we mentioned Dan Quinn. It's not that easy either, but it does feel like the NFC side is the Packers, right? Like, and, and the Buccaneers. And I'm thinking to myself, these aren't good football teams. These aren't well, certainly aren't elite football teams. I, I think Patrick Queen said it best when he said it's basketball on turf. That is what the NFC appears. And when you play a completely differently structured football team, which is built from the trenches out, which is meant for physicality. I don't think these teams are prepared for the way, the manner in which they get hit, the ferocity in which they get hit and the relentlessness in which they get hit. And that's why Lamar is whatever he is, 21 and one against the NFC. It's not all Lamar, although Lamar has been great. It's a combination of two things. If you don't see Lamar a lot, it's really hard to prepare for him. And it's the second thing, which is you don't play up against defenses that are that physical very often. And the NFC is not a physical league. Occasionally there are physical teams that make it through, but it is not a physical league. And I think that is why look at who the 49ers lose to this year. They lost to the Browns, right? They lost to us. And did they lose to either the Bengals or the Steelers? They lost to one of them, I think, as well. They didn't have a great record against the AFC North. It's a different style of football, and especially this time of year. Now they'll have the benefit of playing in a in a dome stadium out in out in Vegas, but still 
you get hit in the mouth like that, it's not going to feel pleasant. Fans are not going to feel pleasant about this. You said you've been to Super Bowls, took that. Yeah, it cost a lot of money. It cost Disney World money. It was a couple grand. I ran trips for three to five grand, which it's not chump change. It's a big deal. It's it's become Tahiti money, dude. You know what I mean? This it, is... it, it's a $10,000 ticket. It's, you know, five days in Vegas, getting scalped for everything. It, it In a sterile environment to fly into the desert. If you love Vegas, great or whatever. I... I don't know. I, I, I like, I don't know how many R people are, people are calling me. Are you doing a trip? I'm like, if I did a trip, it'd be 15 grand. You know, like, yeah. and like, and, and God bless you. If you have 10 grand to do it, people just went to Europe. They played out on the West coast a couple of times this year. Right. So they've, pe- the fans have fans have money ready for the Orioles at various points too. Uh, you know, I've seen the ticket prices drop this week. Every fan that had tickets thought they were going to scalp their tickets to somebody else. And now they're all like, I want 250. Well, it's going to be 15 degrees. You might get 100 bucks for your tickets. It, people are maybe saving up a little bit, but I think yeah. there's going to be an incredible sticker shock about Vegas. This will be the, this will be the most expensive uh, sporting event in the United States history. This will be the most expensive Super Bowl ever for a combination of factors. The NFL has raised, steadily raised over the last five years – they saw the secondary markets. They saw what ticket prices were going for. They said, give me some of that. They increased the face value. If you can even get a ticket from the league, the face value for a lower bowl seat is going to be five, six, seven grand face value before it goes on the secondary market. Upper deck, you're looking at several thousand dollars for the quote unquote get in price at face, which no one's going to be able to get. On top of that, this is one of the smaller stadiums in the country. Allegiant Stadium is a, a fantastic stadium. I've been there for, for the Ravens game when they played out there uh, a couple of years ago. It is a great stadium. It is accessible. It's easy to get around. It's a great place to watch a game, but it's also very small supply and demand. These ticket prices are going are going to go very high. And now the question is like, if it's Detroit, and it's they haven't insane. been since whenever it's, it's going to be beyond. If it's San Francisco, they got a ton of money there. Um, Green Bay, I don't know, not quite as much, but they'll still have a, a, a bunch of fans who are interested in seeing this version of the Packers. Uh, the Cowboys was going to be the one that, if it was Cowboys Ravens, broke the bank, break the bank mm-hmm. beyond. Um, with the Cowboys out, those prices are certainly going to come down a little bit, but. Um, yes, be prepared. It's going to cost an absolute fortune to go to the Super Bowl this year, and there's no way around it. They got a Joe Stone Crab in, uh, in, in Vegas. I've been there, so I can get some Stone Crabs. David Katz is here. He's Katz Man Do. Uh, still doing the good work, still loving the Orioles, still loving the Ravens. Baseball around the corner. We got a lease now, so at least, hey, for uh, I'll shut up for five and a place in the Dominican uh, as of this morning, right? So, you know, you're wearing your Oriole uh, City Connect gear there. I see what you're doing, you know. There's if it doesn't work out here this week or next week or God forbid three weeks from now, there's still there's a baseball season here, which is beautiful. I know it used to be so depressing when the Terps were bad and there was no, you know, March madness to look forward to and the Orioles you knew were going to be bad. But now it's um it's a little bit of an embarrassment of riches to have the number one seed in your various conference slash division uh, in the two big sports for the city. Um, what a blessing. So we got to enjoy this. This has been an unbelievable season. We have an unbelievably fun team to watch on top of it. It is such a pleasure to watch these guys play on both sides of the football. And let's not forget, this is, this is entertainment. It's an entertainment business. And we truly have many of the most entertaining players in the sport on both sides. Well, and emerging players too. And Kyle Hamilton right. and guys that are going to be Zay flag guys that could have a coming out party along with Lamar and along with Odell Beckham. And I mean, Roquan Smith would be a coming out party for him because he hasn't had his flowers, uh, you know, so right. got some great football players, great football players step up in the big moments. So we have big moments beginning at four 30 on Saturday, David Katz, uh, formerly of Fox and yeah, you want to promote anything or do you, no, nothing, nothing. Look, I, I still have my company, The Post Game. We work with leagues, teams, athletes, and brands. We do video production and social media work and media rights advisory. So we're in and around the sports space. And I spend all my time thinking about how the sports media landscape is changing. You know, you had a game on Peacock, exclusively on Peacock. It was the most streamed event in the history of streaming in our country. Um, 
And you can I see streamed it at Hollywood going. Casino because I ain't giving him six bucks. I'm one of those. I mean, nah, I just, you know, like I, I thought it was the NFL does a lot of things that, you know, are, are a bunch of guys get together in a boardroom. But when it actually sits on the street, it, it's offensive. I mean, you know, it, it is it's offensive. Some of what they do is offensive for sure. Yeah. They, look, they do it because they can. It is the national pastime now. Fans cannot get enough of this sport. And you add in what fantasy has become. You add in sports wagering and all of that stuff. It's only making it bigger. It's only making it so that you care about games you never in the in the past would have cared about. Um, and the the networks know this. This is truly the only must see programming. And when you look at, I think of the top 100 shows on television last year, I think 93 of them were the NFL. So what are you going to do? <laughs> right, right. You don't have the biggest series. You 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 have the thing above the biggest series, right? Because it's it's ongoing and it lasts all weekend and it's ten hours a day Saturday, ten hours a day Sunday, ten hours a day on Monday. Even when it snows, they figure out a way to to usurp Martin Luther King Day. So uh, and I'm sure we have not seen the last doubleheader on Martin Luther King Day, which I'm sure they'll wrap a bow around it and give hey. some money away and. There'll be a 4.30 kickoff every year for Martin Luther King. Day. Remember when Christmas Day used to be an, an Christmas NBA day. day? I remember yeah. when Christmas Day was Christmas Day. That was, an NBA, that was an NBA experience. And then this year, the NFL kicked uh, the college football playoff off New Year's Eve because of the NFL. And then they moved to New Year's Day, which is probably a better, a better setup. I'll tell you one more thing you're going to see. They're going to add one more week to this season. OK, they're going to oh, yeah. they're going to add one more week to the season. And the way this because 17 just isn't the right number. 18 is the right number L'chaim, to all my people out there. But 18 is the right number. And what's going to happen is they're going to push it back one more week. They've already moved, by the way, the Grammys has moved off of this week. The NBA All Star is kind of sitting there waiting. They're going to end up moving. And the Super Bowl is going to end up on a holiday weekend, which everyone said they should have made the Super Bowl weekend a holiday weekend, a national holiday. They're going to move it to President's Day weekend in the middle of February, and everyone's going to have Monday off, and Sunday's going to be Super Bowl Sunday. That's where it's going. You you know it. You can see it. At some point, they got to get the CBA, but there'll be more money there when these new TV deals kick in, and uh, everyone will sing Kumbaya. But that's it. Two preseason games, 18 regular season games ending on President's Day weekend. What's more American than that? And Super Bowl 69 in Wembley Stadium. So there you have it. Uh, uh, David Katz is here. He, he will be monitoring Super Bowl 58. We're almost there. Uh, it was 11 years since the last one in Purple Rain 2. I've done the Apollo Creed. I see him in the gambling ads now. Uh, Carl Weathers, who's been on the show. Ain't going to be no rematch on Purple Rain 2. So there's a Purple Rain 3. Katz. You write it, all right? Yeah. I'll be, I'm will be. i going to be doing the Cup of Soup or Bowl. Uh, we're going to be doing some charity beginning uh, February 5th. Uh, not Radio Row, Crab Cake Row. Uh, done locally all week long beginning February 5th. I got my Costa shirt on. We'll be there on February 6th. Kicking things off at Fadley's on the 5th. We'll be at Coco's on the 7th, which is Wednesday. Thursday to State Fair in Catonsville. And then on Friday, hopefully um, uh, Purple Friday, Super Bowl Purple Friday, we'll be at Pappas and Cockeysville. That's February the 9th. I am Nestor. We are done. WNST, AM 1570, it's House in Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore positive. Stay with us.